calories starts dropping, it may pick it up. So just that's why I think. I think we got that on, on mic. I know, but you can do that now. <laughs> do we have a, a, so if you fart, an official position on peanut we gallery you. chatter? It's fine. I mean, we've been uh, all right with yeah. it so far, right? Yeah, I think so. Yeah. Yeah. As, long as, as long as you're not chattering with yourselves. No, but I'm saying it doesn't always pick up. Yeah, if it's participatory. This one will probably pick up. Uh, yeah, if you have questions, this will also pick it up better, though, so that's nice. That's true. Yeah. So, Lisa, wasn't that mystery of like somebody being like, yes, question was. Yeah, that's happened a couple of times. Or, what are you doing, Matt? I'm just checking to make sure everything's on. I don't know why. So, it could be this way. so, so you guys it's always good to be careful. are opening this up to questions? Yeah, Yes. Uh, I mean, if it, at yeah. the appropriate time, if you have a question, then it'd be, you know, and should we like we've done so far. We'll raise your hand. <laughs> raise your hand. <laughs> I have, like, a Stand up, identify yourself. <laughs> Don't say anything yeah. like me, me, me. That's rude. No, I'm kidding. I think we've done so far. So, so far, we've done pretty well with it. I don't know. Can we raise time? Uh, so when are we starting? Twenty or do you want to go? Well, I was going to start right then, but <laughs> let, let's go with let's go thirty. thirty. Let's go with thirty. One thirty. One thirty. And remember, we're starting at one thirty. So don't start on the twenty-five, right, 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 right. twenty-six, twenty-seven, right. twenty-eight, yeah. twenty-nine. Two, one. Cheers, and welcome to the Nook on the on the Voluntary Virtues Network. I'm here today with Mike and Flacho. Jake. Matt. Cheers. And John. Howdy. Uh, today I am drinking a barley wine by Rip Current. I would have been drinking Liberto IPA, but somebody drank it all. It's delicious. <laughs> <laughs> Very good. So Matt, why don't you tell us about <laughs> Liberto IPA since I haven't had it today. Well, actually I did have some earlier, but not, not recently. Well, that's besides the point. A couple yeah. hours ago. There you go. Uh, so yes, the Liberto IPA, it's got a mix of El Dorado and Mosaic hops, 8.2%, a little over 100 IBU, tastes amazing. Wonderful. Yes, one of my favorite IPAs, if not my favorite. Why is it called Liberto IPA? Because it's for Libertopia, the festival coming up. <laughs> festival, I'm not sure if that's accurate, but yes, this coming actually, weekend. Actually, well, this is well, on the air. Yeah, actually, it'll be in full swing by the time this hits the air. So come hang out yeah, with so us down in San Diego. Yeah, sir, if you're watching this Saturday night, you can still still show up for Sunday and have a good time. You can still show up for Taco whatever Taco something. <laughs> I don't know. I don't even know you're talking about. Come exactly. down to Libertopia, <laughs> town and country, tonight. <laughs> look for the nook. You look for the nook. Yes, <laughs> if you for look the for nook. the nook. <laughs> if you want to know where the party is, <laughs> look for the nook. <laughs> People in the know know the nook. Yes, ask about the nook. The Bitcoin taco. You want to try oh, yeah, liver toe exactly. Oh, 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 I know what you're talking about now. On Saturday night, there's a meetup with John Bush and Kath, uh, Kat Bleich. They're doing a cross-country tour all on Bitcoin, and we're having a meetup with them. We're going to... Uh, Buy buy some tacos with some Bitcoin and I sit around I and heard talk tacos. about. It. Okay. Yep, at City Taco. So go check, come and join us. Be a lot of fun, a lot of great people. It sounds like fun, Steve. <laughs> having a good time, having a good time. As Queen would say. Anybody else drinking anything? I know we're a little bit uh, sparse. Well, on there was. I was drinking earlier. It was uh, a Four Hops IPA by oh, yeah. by Ballast Point. Am I correct? Rip is, is current. No, it's Rip Current. It's a quadruple right IPA. It's Rip a, Current. Okay. It's actually it really smooth for fifteen percent. Oh man, it was wonderful. Smooth for fifteen percent. That's like that's a miracle, right? We should there. do a Liberty on the Rocks at Rip Current. I've yeah, that'd be a good idea, that, right? So there you go. It's in North County, and we can swing that. It sounds like a good idea to me. I'm never gonna turn down a night at Liberty on the Rocks. <laughs> I'm, so, drink, I'm drinking water, just in case anyone wants to know. Water, <laughs> get out. The well, thing, see, the <laughs> thing that's survived humans for... Brought to you by hydrogen. Brought to you by hydrogen, oxygen, stardust, etc. Is that tap water, or is that fan, some kind of fancy Sparkly water? Sparkling mineral you get, water. You don't get to know that. <laughs> <laughs> that's confidential information. <laughs> am I being detained, or am I free to go? <laughs> Answer Crossing the street for what? <laughs> anyway, 
So this past week was Veterans Day, so we're going to talk a little bit about that. Don't like to talk about it much, but uh, John and I both served in the same unit, actually, different times. And obviously before we discovered the philosophy of liberty and, and all that, um, so John, why don't you... Kick it off. Tell me what you think <laughs> of, uh, of Veterans Day. Well, yeah. Um, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> okay, well, <laughs> I can, uh, there's a couple ways I could go about that, but uh, um, more or less, yeah, my opinions have changed uh, a lot since those days. And, uh, uh, <laughs> I believe that's proprietary. You might want to know. <laughs> <laughs> Could that have anything to do with my opinions of the, of, of the public school system? Of anything at all. <laughs> of compulsory schooling, right? Yeah. So, uh, uh, I could say, in a nutshell, you know, as a veteran, you're probably used to it too. You get used to, not necessarily used to, but people uh, extending. Uh, an appreciation for your service and you know Veterans Day and all this and it comes on uh, Memorial Day isn't it too Memorial Day yeah. and, and uh, Veterans Day and Fourth of July Marine Corps birthday you know Marine Corps birthday is a little different but at least with uh, the other two <clears throat> I uh, I've burned a lot of bridges with my responses over the last probably with four years ago is when I first started sending out a, a counter to to people's text, for instance, on veterans, say, hey, thank you for your service, you know, I'd respond with something to the uh, effect of uh, there's nothing noble in serving, you know, uh, psychopathic bankers, politicians, and uh, industry giants, and carving up the, uh, the, uh, the brown nations for their own, uh, you know, economic hegemony. So, uh, yeah, I, I almost don't get them anymore. <laughs> <laughs> Which On the probably bright side. was a desired effect. <laughs> <Right>. <laughs> yeah, so that, that that's kind of uh, what my opinion of Veterans Day is, you know. But there's still a lot of, um, of course, there's still a lot of, uh, uh, a lot of, the system has, and, and people sub still subscribe to the deification of soldiers, and teachers aren't far behind, police officers, firemen, all this, you know, the apparatus of the state, and, Anyway, yeah. your thoughts? Yeah, with with uh, the whole nationalistic idea and uh, soldier worship and all that, it, it, I, it, for a long time I was really uncomfortable with people coming up, oh, thank you for your service. Most of the time I would just smile and walk away. <laughs> yeah, because there was a, a while of that too, but eventually, yeah, you know, I, I felt compelled to actually, hopefully, stimulate people's minds and like, you know, what? Yeah. It's, it's really not okay, and and it may be your children that are doing this someday if you keep, uh, you know, you're going down this same path, you know, and we won't, uh, yeah. Anyway, I remember it was one of the statist holidays last year. One of my brothers texted me and said, I know you're not cool with this, but thank you for your service anyway. Oh, man. Yeah, and so my response was, imagine that you thought you were protecting innocent people when it turned out that you were really facilitating the murder of thousands of people and millions over the years. And then somebody came up and thanked you for that. How how would you feel about about that situation? And of course, you didn't really have a response. But well put. <laughs> <laughs> but I mean, that's literally what we're talking about here. It's and I I think there's a tendency sometimes to go the opposite direction and say, oh, all soldiers are psychopaths, all cops are psychopaths, and things like that. Well, no, they're just as duped as most of everybody else right. into believing that this system is a moral one. Um, they're, they're pawns, really, for the global elite. And 
and actually a lot of veterans become some of the most ardent uh, most ardent uh, activists for liberty afterwards because I think and I think it's because they have an opportunity to stare into the beast right so to speak stare into the eyes of the beast they see the worst of the state uh, when when you go to war when you when you face these kind of things um, I was talking to a friend of mine who uh, a former military buddy and he commented that there's really only two positions that you see uh, typically with with veterans and it's either they are completely 100 percent anti-war uh, pro-liberty or they're 100 <laughs> percent warmongering right. right and and I think I think it's because a lot of people can't face the reality that they might have actually been involved with something that horrific. Right, absolutely. Yeah, you're starting to talk about that's probably a foundational uh, view that they have. And if you start going in and, and, and recognizing contradictions in your thinking or, or your positions, then... Uh, yeah, most people won't go and you know destroy the house of cards that they live in. Yeah, you that's, know? that's yeah. absolutely yeah. right. So they'll uh, so they'll choose even if they start to recognize it as okay, this is logical, rational, or whatever. They'll they'll actually make the conscious choice to to go the other direction and and, and stay where they are. And it's and it's with everything too. And any kind of idea You're that right, a person right. has that they they hold on to, when you you challenge that, they're challenging. Um, some, something fundamental about what makes them them, right. what, the w things that they believe. Imagine if tomorrow you found out, like you, you found out for sure that everything you believe is wrong. Um, it have a huge psycho psychological impact on you. Right. So, that, I went through a period so in my true. life like that too. <laughs> yeah. It was it was pretty rough. People tend to avoid. I think that for that for that reason. I, I picture it like the dominoes. You know, you have ideas that you you've you've uh, you have, and they're like dominoes, stacked nicely and neatly. And and once a, you know, uh, an opinion or an idea falls, you know, you recognize that this one is false, and then it bumps into another one. You're like, oh shit, oh shit, you know, like <laughs> stop, <laughs> stop. Oh, yeah. you know, set them back up. You know what I mean? Leave they're the game alone. You know, walk you're away. Don't go back. You know, oh, right? shit, this one's yeah. broken. <laughs> right? you know? Yeah. So yeah. I, while we're on the Veterans Day thing, I, I'd like to take a moment to plug uh, Bill Bupert's website, ZeroGov, and uh, he wrote an essay on Veterans Day that is just incredible, and I couldn't possibly express anything uh, uh, more clearly, and, and his opinions coincide with mine. He's a retired Army colonel, I think it is, and uh, it's a wonderful essay. I think it's called Veterans Day. Just look up Bill Bupert, ZeroGov, Veterans Day. Boom, you'll get it. It's a great web. It's a, he has a great blog, blog too. Yeah. I, um, I, I, I was thinking, I, I um, don't mean to inter interfere on the dynamic, but, you know, uh, uh, from my perspective, somebody who's, who's never been in um, the military or really exposed to it too much in a, in a really first-person sense is uh, I... Uh, you know, I, I worked for uh, Walmart for a number of years overnights, and the, and the thing that was really funny is that when you get around Veterans Day, Memorial Day, or the 4th of July, they, they'd be putting up banners up hanging from the ceiling, and it would say, you know, we thank you for your service. They'd be all over the store. And my perspective from that was I read... Uh, I highly recommend Voltaire to anybody. Right. When it when it when it comes to just, you know, just poking fun at the government, just read some Voltaire. You know, it's a, I, it's it's a good time. I, Voltaire something. and Carlin, Sorry, right? George Carlin. George Voltaire. Voltaire. Yeah, it's a great yeah, night. Yeah, right? I read he'd live. Really good at satire. I read that he'd always live near borders in case the government got pissed off. At him. I, yeah, Vol Voltaire was That's always a pretty like, good call. Vol <laughs> Voltaire, for most of his life as an author, was on the run. And but the the thing about uh, I bring up Voltaire. Because uh, it, it would always make me laugh, because after I, I read uh, uh, Candide, or Candid, however you want, want to pronounce it, um, it's a very short story, but at one point or another, and... English or Latin? Uh, English. <laughs> well, I mean, 
Uh, I mean, it was originally written in French, but, you know. Um, uh, to cut a short story even shorter, at one point the main character, uh, Candide, is in a bar. And he's very distraught. He's gone through a, a bad time in his life. And he's had a little bit too much to drink. And these guys who are in the uh, military of the um, country he's in, it's kind of like they... He had some fancy to it, so you're not really sure where he's at. But So they, they come up to him, and they go, Hey, man, it looks like you're having a bad time. They kind of pat him on the shoulder, and he's like, Yeah, I'm going through some shit right now. I, it's kind of weird for me to talk about it. He does talk about it, but that's going to be a long story. And uh, they go, Hey, uh, you want to be a hero? And he goes... <laughs> Yeah, okay, sure. What do I got to do to be a hero? And they bring him a uniform for like the military there, and they go, "Hey, man, put this on, put this on, man." And then so he puts it on, you know. And they 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 are like, "Oh, you, you know," you, they kind of rearrange it a bit, but they go, "Hey, man, you look wonderful, dude. You look great. You, you know, you're a hero now." And he goes, "I'm a hero," and they're like, "Yeah." And he's like, "Oh, I'm a hero." And then the battle starts, and then he realizes how bad it is. But so whenever I see that sign that says like, you know, celebrate your heroes, I go look at him like. <laughs> they're just it's a scam like it's just like oh put this uniform on and now you're a hero you know that's the way i look at it i guess you know but yeah hero sounds like a bad gig <laughs> <laughs> well and the origin of veterans day is actually armistice day which is about world celebrating war peace yeah, yeah, yeah world war yeah. one right. world war one yeah. Yeah. yeah so how did it turn from that into celebrating war yeah, and it's really kind of weird how how it turned from that. If I, I think I have it on me right now, um, the uh, the thing about well, don't uh, pass it to me. I'm not. Um, <laughs> the, uh, the the thing about um, Ebola is um, um, donate it, now. They'll double your donation. It it, 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 it goes to the uh, the idea of, of of how the perception of what war is in most people's minds. Um, after World War One. They were so happy the war was over. Everyone was so happy because it was a, it was a slaughter. There's no other way to describe World War One than just slaughter. Right. And they were so happy the war the war was over that they actually minted a coin, and uh, and uh, in 1922, which is a little bit late after, but there was a lot of contention about what the actual design was going to be. It was it was it's kind <laughs> of a big issue. And instead of it being the, uh, I can't really show because the camera's not going to pick it up really that well, but. Um, it's uh, instead of being a depiction of liberty, which has been on most U.S. coins in the past, it's actually a depiction of peace. And she's got a tiara on of sort, but her hair is all like disheveled and wild, and, and I think that adds to the. She's the having idea a good time. Of, yeah, the idea of peace. You know, it's just you know we're not worried about being formal right now. We're having a good time. But on the back, but the, but on the back of it is like it, a Friday. But on the back of it is is very different from almost any U.S. coin whatsoever, the back of it has the eagle, which is supposed to be on all U.S. coins somewhere. It's like smoking a joint or something. Yeah, <laughs> but, the, but instead of the eagle, you know, flying across, you know, the skies, the eagle is actually perched on a rock because, you know, yeah, go ahead, pass it's it around. Peaceful. Yeah, because it's peace. And if you look at the rock, that, that coin's really worn down. But if you look at the rock, it actually says peace on the rock. Huh. And that's hmm. what, I, what I always tell people. I go... Hmm. Like World War One was so bad, they minted a coin because they were happy it was over, yeah. and that's been totally mentality, <laughs> right. total mentality, total, total mentality change. Think about like the the um, the end of like World War Two or Vietnam. Was there a coin that said Vietnam over? Pass it around, you know? Yeah. No, it was just like, oh, war's over. But where's that's the next one going to start? And how many people can we sucker into this one? You know, yeah. like it's it's the way uh, I I think um, you know. The U.S., if not maybe the world as a whole, looks at war in a, in more of a glamorous uh, view than I think we ever had in the entire history of the world. You it's know, like sex is sensitive. Can we drop it and hear that not. silver ding? Yes, go ahead, drop it. I've, I've got I've got a couple more of them. I think somewhere. Wow. At, <laughs> silver, <laughs> silver. That's solid. so. To that idea, I um, the. World War One, not to go crazy, but like yeah, that, but essentially the United States robbed the world of a great opportunity when they got involved with World War One because you had uh, essentially Brits and Germans playing soccer on Christmas and caroling. Yeah, the Christmas and truce, they were yeah. done fighting, you know. They, they yeah. like, literally the the they, the European nations were at a stalemate, and, and the the soldiers were essentially done fighting. Of course, the psychopaths. Uh, 
orchestrating the war from 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 chairs or like you know fight some more but they were out of resources and then the united states came in rolled everything up in a few short months and yeah. and unfortunately uh took away a, a good learning opportunity for the world essentially but it anyway World War, hmm. one. World War One, yeah. Smedley Butler was World War One too. Right? Absolutely right. War is a racket. If you hadn't read it, must read. Absolutely, that's uh, an American Marine Corps general, two-time awardee of the Congressional Medal of Honor, and he writes a very short, fast read on how war is a racket. And it's just like it was written in thirty-five or thirty-seven, and you read it now, and it's like when well, two thousand seven. You think it's written? It's fantastic. He, yeah. Sp- Speaks plainly. It's a blistering fast read. The yeah. con behind war hasn't changed much. Absolutely. Yeah, he talks about million-dollar uh, contracts, uh, congressional contracts. For Mosquito Net, he was in Bella Wood, and he's like, I was in Bella Wood, and I didn't see one damn Mosquito Net. <laughs> 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 right, yeah. Yeah. And I think the, the, the other note on there was um, he mentions, like, how long boots last in the war. Right. And then he, he mentions, like, how many boots he ordered for the war, and he goes, yeah, if the war is going to last 30 years, then we might go through all those boots, but that's not going to happen. Yeah. <laughs> and, and, and in the end, not to spoil it, he, he does it so eloquently, but he says uh, in the end that he doesn't condemn his fellow Marines or sister service members. He condemns the U.S. government for using the United States Marine Corps as the bankers repo men, you know. So he, this was uh, the thinking even in the 30s, you know, that, that they yeah. were, he was thinking like this. Bankers run the world for 100 <laughs> years now, right? Yeah. yeah. That's amazing. It's, yeah, it's a good read. Bankers repo men. That yeah. sounds accurate to me. Mm-hmm. So Veterans Day. Nationalism. <laughs> yeah. You got something to say about nationalism? Oh, man, nationalism. <laughs> <laughs> A virus of the mind, right? right? Yeah, <laughs> virus absolutely. Virus of the mind. Sell it to me, Matt. It, it's a gang. Nationalism is like joining a gang. You're joining a gang, and you have your territory. You've got your gang colors that you call your flag. Everybody wears those gang colors. You've got all these things that are really gang rituals that these people take place in, and they want to they wanna elect their gang leaders. They, they want gang policy made based on democracy, which is a terrible method of making a decision. The most idiots come together to choose what the stupidest way to do something. It doesn't make any sense. And just, just picture how stupid the average person is, and then realize that half of them are dumber than that. <laughs> well, you don't... This numbers work out. George Carlin. Yeah. I know... Uh, <laughs> I mean, the thing that that, that to me is uh, most glaringly um, uh, obvious <clears throat> is all like the monuments and stuff, you know. Well, it's really a religion. Yeah. Well, that that's I guess maybe what you have I was your idols. At. Yeah. You have yeah. your prayers. The, the incantations. Declarations. Men in black. <laughs> you know. Yeah, you know right. I mean, like you, you have know, your priests and. Yeah, right. <laughs> I mean, you got you know most of you know all of the the mall in Washington just being a great collection of alabaster arranged in, in a certain fashion. You know, you've got your freedom penis, the Washington Monument. And then, <laughs> you know, you've got you know all the <laughs> <laughs> sort of other you, stuff. You, you even government no, no. <laughs> You you even have the destruction of other religions in favor of your own. Yeah. With the. With the uh, Washington, not the Washington Monument, the um, not the Freedom the Penis, mountain. but another one, um, Mountain the Freedom Penis, um, <laughs> Rushmore. Rushmore, Mount Rushmore, yeah, Mount Rushmore. Mount Rushmore, it was sacred to the Indians in that area, really? and we decided, oh fuck that, we're just gonna we're just going to blow it up and put our own idols in the place of your sacred land. Clarification, I Who's wasn't we? born yet. I had no involvement in that. <laughs> by we, you mean not anybody <laughs> involved. <laughs> by, <laughs> by we, I mean not they. Us. Yeah. <laughs> a bunch of douchebags a long time ago, basically. Yeah. I would love to see someone, like, deface <laughs> Mount Rushmore, like, literally. Like, <laughs> the, like yeah. Well. <laughs> <laughs> Maybe not that. <laughs> Like, in a First <laughs> Amendment sense, <laughs> that's what we mean. <laughs> it, is that before or after, like, Team America evacuates the facility? <laughs> America, <laughs> fuck yeah. Uh, yeah First on the agenda after the fall of the state. <laughs> yeah. Better 
restart it. <laughs> was it? Is to it? a nice, naked, raw yeah. rock, f yeah. you know? Some foliage yeah, right, there you go. Hey, does anybody, uh, the, this is, is probably dating me a bit because I haven't heard about anything but forever, but does anybody remember the, um, uh, nearby, uh, the, the, um, god damn, I can't remember what tribe it was, but they were doing a, a similar sort of monument to, um, um, it is Crazy Horse. Crazy Horse, and it's, and exactly it's, right, and yeah. it's gigantic. And right. I, did, they ever, did they ever end up finishing it, yeah. or did they run out of money on I, that? I, I think it's still in work. The guy who did it passed away, and his son took it over. Okay, all right. That's the right. last I heard, and I right. don't know how close they are to completing it. Hmm. One up them. That's good. <laughs> <laughs> but yeah, nationalism as a concept is horrible. It doesn't make any sense at all. It, it Unless kinda... you're trying to steer. Uh, Unless you want to tell other people what to do, which people who want to tell other people what to do, I really can't stand them. Why? <laughs> you, you're yeah. Run your own life. Mind your own damn business. What is that? Why would you tell anybody to do something unless you had something to gain from it? Exactly. If you, yeah. if you, and that's the other thing. The the idea of the philosopher king is, and then and then there's the people who can't get you to follow your idea, their ideas, so they use government to enforce them. Yeah, oh, my, okay. My idea is so great. I'm gonna force everybody to. To, At the to barrel of a gun, it. nonetheless. Yeah. yeah, my idea is so good. Hold on, let me get my rifle out and make sure that you think it's a good idea before we implement this. I don't want you to have any second thoughts about it before we actually get forward here. Yeah. But Mike and Steve, it's for the good of everyone. Remember, <laughs> it's for the good of everyone. Me and all my buddies said it was a good idea. You better listen to me. <laughs> For all my other friends who also have rifles and you yeah. know, you know high what's caliber best other for weapons. You as a whole, you know. Are you un-American? Not for you as a person, but for you as a whole, you know. <laughs> yeah. Other people that are outside of you that are somehow a part of yeah, you. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. Okay. The other people right, who right. are also somehow intertwined, yeah, in, in, intricately in your life, but so. actually aren't you at all. Sorry to interrupt. No, you got fine. a question? Mm -hmm. Kind of. Just a comment, really. Just to play devil's advocate here. Um, like, I have a friend, for instance, who... He has a friend. To the you got a friend. <laughs> I have a friend of a friend, actually. Right, right. It's a friend of a friend. So what's this friend um, of a friend thing? He would say something to the effect of, like, well, it's better... How do you put it? Uh, better to be active in doing something than to be a useless ideologue or something. Yeah, basically, like, well, you're not changing anything, and I'm making a difference in a positive way. How is it better? If, if you're not that's changing... The question, of course. That's, it can't be what better you unless you're improving. Really? If you're changing something, yeah, that's great, unless it's worse. Exactly. If you're making it worse, exactly. then that's not good. Well, and all of that's That's why I told anyway. them. I was like, I exactly, just hope you're right, making yeah. wise yeah. choices. Yeah, it, that's... I can't stop it. What is better? What is worse? And in, in what capacity? Like, right? so what if you're doing something? And for whom? Like, that's that's the big question, too. Yeah. yeah I better for whom? I mean... Like... Handing out flyers at the courthouse is doing something. You could be yeah. non-participatory in the system True. and be doing something. Of you know course. what I mean? Right? Yeah. So. Yeah, that's not the only means. But he was basically, I guess, calling me out. Like, well, what are you doing? You work right. Six, 50, 60 that's hours a, a week. that's. That, that's was more this about after, what you're not doing. Was this after just, voting day? Uh, Did he have a sticker? It's <laughs> more about you. Yeah. I think it was like. Yeah, I think it was after. You know, it was definitely yeah. after. I continued the... I'd rather him not do anything and leave me alone. <laughs> you know what I mean? Like, yeah, well... It's better, yeah. If he's voting for things that, I don't know, I guess would make things better for him, I guess yeah, that's all those questions, but... Well, I, I, that's fine. Saying, if know, there's a no fine. vote, there's I mean... but anyway, wrong with yeah, that. Yeah. Just don't force me to have your ideas. Yeah. Yeah, that's, that's basically Dude, what it comes down to. I don't even care if other people have governments. Just, exactly. You know, as long as, you know... Leave me alone. There should be an opt-out of, of some kind. <laughs> right. And right. Opt in. Yeah, that's that's that's, that's, that's really the worst part about nationalism. Right. At least at least Jehovah's Witnesses come to your door and give you the option. <laughs> you know, yeah. nationalists yeah. are like, oh, you don't have an option. You're you're paying your tithe or else. Well, yeah. see, the thing that makes me wonder about this is like, so when it comes to um, like nationalism, in, in in a sense, like we're. I don't want to say that we are born into a nation, but in a legal sense, like, we're born here, we're citizens legally, you know, with their paperwork and all that nonsense. 
but so if if you were to have a uh, a, a sentient being that w would be manufactured, not created, you know what I'm saying? Like like say like a like a robot or so of some sort. Hmm. Would would that would that be a citizen of that country, or would the, would, would, would the sentient being therefore say like, no, I want to live here, or I want to be a citizen of a different country? An expat robot. And does it does an it come in colors? Robot, yeah. Does it come in colors besides red and white and blue? Is my main question. Yeah, it, it is very important. Can can you get your your robot, which which may or may not perform sexual functions, uh, you know, to be in a color other Speaking than white and blue? Speaking of robots. Whoa, 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 whoa. Uh, we are out of time. I, I, well, I think we're about out of time. Yeah. Oh, okay. Oh, Again. You're almost there. We, we, we almost, almost got to sex got robot to this, this time. time. <laughs> Every. Oh, it, man, it's frustrating. We, we will get to it one of these days. One of these days, there will be a sex robot episode, we swear. Visit us at Libertopia. I hope to see you all there. Look for the nook. Look Find for the, the nook. nook. There may Keyword or may not be robot a show sex. From Libertopia. There are great things at the nook, <laughs> Wonderful including things us. In the news. Yeah. You know where I can buy an American flag? <laughs> <laughs> ah, boom, 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 boom. They're made in China, strangely. <laughs> Have a good one. Cheers. Cheers. Take it Cheers. easy. Cheers. <laughs> okay.